in case. So yeah, I will let them in now. Hello, good afternoon, good day, everyone. We do ask that as you are connecting to the audio to join this very important discussion on a plastic pollution in water called choking in plastics, that you please uh, be sure to mute yourself or, and stay muted until we have a more interactive part of our discussion. And thank you so much. I'm gonna wait just another minute to allow others um, to be able to join us at this time before we begin. Good day, excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the vir this virtual youth-led program organized by the United Nations Environment Program, or UNEP, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, the UN Department of Global Communications, and the Permanent Mission of Costa Rica. Today in this panel, Choking in Plastic, Addressing Water Pollution to Ensure the Right to a Healthy Environment and the Achievement of SDG 6 for Youth, we will discuss how plastic pollution in water impacts the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment and the achievement of the 2030 Agenda outlined by the Secretary General's report, Our Common Agenda. My name is Kyra Eubanks. I'm the Youth Representative for New Future Foundation to the United Nations Department of Global Communications, or UNDGC, and the co-chair of the UNDGC Civil Society's Youth Representative Steering Committee. I'm honored to be the moderator for this interactive panel, which is a side event for the ECOSOC Youth Forum in 2023. We'll begin today's program with a video about plastic pollution. And while we're waiting for this, uh, this video to please um, start, what I would like to do is I'd like to ask you all, where are you joining in from? If you are joining us, you know, from here in you, uh, United Nations headquarters as part of the 2023 ECOSOC Youth Forum, or you're coming in virtually from around the world, we want to know where you're dialing in from. So if you could please share your name, the organization that you're associated with, as well as where you're dialing in from, that would be fantastic while we're waiting for the video to begin. Thank you. And just so um, that we're aware, I believe there may be audio. Uh, we may need to start it over. The existence of plastics hinders the achievement of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, affecting natural resources and the health and rights of communities around the world. For example, this is Yvette. She lives in a fishing village near an estuary. Her family has always depended on the ocean and its resources, but recently, a plastic manufacturer has settled upstream. Pollution from the factory may cause flooding, impacts tourism and fisheries, contaminate seafood and water sources with microplastics, and overall has negative repercussions on human rights. Every step of plastic production, when unsupervised, can impact the health and human rights of communities like Yvette's which lack the power to influence planning stages. Try to imagine the stress and anxiety the parents of these children suffer, being exposed to plastic-related toxics. 
These marginalized communities living next to polluting industries are more susceptible to inequalities. Health issues compound education disparities. Moreover, waste picking is considered a woman's job, even if their bodies are impacted disproportionately, further exposing girls like Yvette to sanitation issues. As fisheries are polluted, fishermen, like Yvette's father, are forced to take jobs in production, gravely impacting their health with highly toxic materials. At the same time, the lack of political will and financing delays the development of circular economies, recycling and collection infrastructures, and fails to properly address unemployment. Now, from an infrastructural standpoint, plastic is produced using highly contaminated methods. This commodifies natural resources for profit and hinders the improvement of cleaner energies. Coupled with insufficient regulations and penalties, this hampers the development of sustainable communities, while complex recycling systems burden individual consumers and local authorities abdicate their responsibilities. From an ecologic standpoint, plastic production drives climate change through the emission of greenhouse gases, threatens marine wildlife and aggregates contaminants through bioaccumulation and ocean acidification. It also affects life on land, as most microplastics and plastic waste output remain on land. Industrialized countries ship their plastic waste to poorer nations and facilities are built mostly in minority communities like events threatening strong institutions and undermining justice and stability. In all, plastic pollution prevents the reduction of inequalities. But there is a silver lining. We are presented with a chance to create equitable collaboration opportunities to address plastic pollution at the global scale, to help strengthen the voices from impacted countries and come up with real solutions. Wow, no, that was absolutely informative. And I'm wondering if there was something that you learned just from the beginning of that video alone, as we start with sharing information, sharing knowledge. And as demonstrated in this video, you know, we can see that plastic pollution has become a major global threat, negatively impacting human health and the environment and compromising our ability to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. Studies have shown that plastic pollution not only contaminates the environment, but also human physical well-being through contaminating drinking water, as we saw in the video, and damaging sustainable food systems. And as mentioned, um, we were able to hear about, for example, the impact that it makes on fisheries. So you can see, for example, that this is impacting not just the environment or the planet, but it is also impacting us and our everyday life. In 2021, UNEP published a global assessment report that found that about 80% of total marine litter constitutes plastics, which is ingested by marine life and then ends up inside of the human body through consuming them. All people have the right to a healthy environment as recently recognized by the Human Rights Council and the General Assembly. The realization of this right which is interlinked with the right to water is a pathway to addressing plastic pollution and achieving the SDGs, including SDG six, which is clean water and sanitation. In this context, our panel today will consider the opportunities and challenges presented through advancing implementation of the right to a healthy environment, expectations for the negotiations of new legally binding instruments on plastic, and the various actions being taken by youth actors around the world to support the achievement of the SDGs with a focus on SDG 6. Dear attendees, we really kindly ask you for your active engagement during this panel. If you hear something that resonates with you or learn something new as shared in the video that we started off this event with, please consider taking a moment to tweet about it using our designated Twitter hashtag, beat plastic pollution. So that's hashtag beat plastic pollution. By sharing your thoughts and insights, you can help spread awareness about the importance of our discussion and make it accessible 
to a wider audience. Thank you in advance for your participation and let's start our engaging and informative dialogue. We look forward to a productive discussion and hearing from our discussion, our distinguished panelists um, as we go through our discussion, as well as from you, the audience members throughout this event on this very critical topic. So one of the first panelists that we'll speak to and get to hear from is none other than Violet Ayambo, who is a champion of Ty Turner's Plastic Challenge Badge. Violet is a girl guide from Mombasa, Kenya. She creates awareness about plastic pollution in schools and communities and engages with decision makers to sensitize them about policies that can help reduce plastic pollution. Violet's work, including beach and community cleanups under an EU funded project has earned her a wave maker certificate for attending a UN challenge badge, plastic tide turners advocacy champion and peer training. We'll then hear from Mr. Daniel Zavala's Boras, who is the minister counsel and a counselor and human rights expert at the permanent mission of Costa Rica to the United Nations. We'll then hear from Shurabe Mercado. Shurabe Mercado is a third year Mexican biotechnology engineering student, a passionate certified and trained social and climate activist on various issues related to STEM education and innovation, the SDGs and others, specifically ecofeminism, education, mental health, cultural diversity, leadership, and youth. Founder of the digital educational social project, Seja Luz, and current president of the Student Society of the School of Engineering and Sciences at her university. She is the current director of the STEAM program for UNESCO's Center for Peace. She's also the current executive director of the International Youth Conference and a member of the UN DGC Civil Society Youth Representative Steering Committee. And it's a pleasure getting to work with you, Shorobe, for sure, on the committee. We'll then hear from Yifkinia Uwandu. Ms. Uwandu is the 2023 Senior Content Campaign Organizing Fellow at the Wikimedia Foundation. She's an environmentalist, youth activist, open activist, Wikimedian, lead of Wiki Vibrance, UNFCCC, Yongo member, United States Government Exchange alumnus, and mentor in the Cambridge Climate Society Mentorship Program. She's also a certified trainer of the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program and member of the Regional Committees for Wikimedia Foundation Funds for Middle East and Africa, or MEA. And then finally, we'll have the opportunity to hear directly from David Boyd, who is a special rapporteur on human rights and the environment. Now, here is the exciting part, at least for me, getting to hear directly from our panelists, which I know you all are so excited to glean some, some wealth of knowledge as it pertains to this topic. And so we will start with Violet Adiambo, champion of Tide Turners, a plastic challenge badge. Violet, your work focuses primarily on plastic pollution. In your view, how can young people influence and change the lifestyle that can lead to plastic pollution free waterways and the achievement of SDG 6? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, as young people nowadays love to use social media. So they can use social media to create awareness about the impact of plastic pollution and encourage individual and other people to practice better plastic disposal methods like reducing, reusing and recy recycling plastics so that it does not end up on waterways. Uh, they can also rally, rally to advocate for change by calling their leaders to come out with regulations and policies that would regulate plastic use, production, and disposal. For example, in Kenya, uh, the use of plastic uh, bags uh, was banned because Kenya used to be so colorful in the streets. You see different colors of 
of plastic bags, yellow, blue, green on the way. We just be walking and then a plastic bag hit your face because of the wind. But since it was burnt, nowadays Kenya is so clean, the streets are so clear. It looks more nicer that way. Uh, also, by starting small, being conscious of proper waste disposal and being responsible for their own immediate environment. For example, uh, makeup have a lot of microplastics. And uh, uh, plastic containers that we use to, to put plastics usually end up being disposed. So as youth, we can always try to pick brands that have more sustainable materials like bamboo. Also, young people are uh, they're very energetic and we exist in numbers. So we can also decide to volunteer to join campaigns, to create awareness locally or within communities, organize and participate in event, in beach cleanups, community cleanups. Uh, they can also be champions of alternative products to use, to single use plastics like water bottles. Mm -hmm. Supporting companies that have better regulations as a way to make uh, their competitors aware of the damage they are causing to the environment. If we buy brands from people that are trying to sustain the environment, uh, so the other people that the other companies that they are competing with and are still trying, they're not trying to, to, to stop the pollution of plastics, they'll be like, if this company is doing so better in stopping plastic pollution, then why can't we do the same and get more customers? Uh, yes. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Violet. And I have to just say that there are a lot of youth around the world and even in some of the communities that I'm a part of in South Florida, where they're asking, what can I do? What can we do? Right? What are actionable steps let's say i'm not eligible to vote yet right but how can i spread awareness about what i'm passionate about which is for example reducing plastic pollution and you shared some amazing ideas um, and steps that we can all take no matter our age but especially for those for example who want to be able to take action now you know, and they may be, for example, still a youth, right? You can find ways to be able to voice what you care about um, and also be able to share around you like you're doing right now, Violet, to spread awareness on what we can do as everyday people in our community. So thank you so much for that. Now, at this time, we would like to hear from Mr. Daniel Zavala Porras, who is the Minister Counselor and Human Rights Expert at the Permanent Mission of Costa Rica to the United Nations. Now, Minister, given your more than 20 years of experience in intergovernmental negotiations, please share with us your thoughts on how we can improve the ways in which decisions are taken at the intergovernmental level on matters related to addressing plastic pollution and upholding the right to a healthy environment. The floor is yours, Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Cairo. Uh, uh, greetings to uh, Violet, uh, to the panelists, and, and definitely to all uh, distinguished participants and friends uh, that I see are coming from, from different regions of the world uh, in this uh, a virtual space that allows this uh, inclusive participation. Uh, Costa Rica is, is thrilled to, to be taking part of the discussion uh, in the context, as you know, of the, of the 2023 ECOSOC Youth Forum. Uh, and, and allow me this initial opportunity to thank UNEP, uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and the UN Department for, for Global Communications uh, for their support uh, to youth, uh, to all of you, on a matter that as a the video and, and uh, Violet and yourself, as mentioned, are of the utmost importance. How uh, do we uh, take the agenda to end plastic pollution forward? Uh, well, uh, we need youth, uh, we need a political will, and we also need a human rights perspective. And, and this is why uh, the criticality of, of the recently uh, universally recognized, <clears throat> although not new, uh, human right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. 
Uh, if coordinated action is not taken uh, by the international community, uh, as a community of member states, but also uh, together with, with the people, a uh, global plastic pollution is expected to rise to previously unheard of proportions in the coming decades. Plastics make uh, for at least, uh, thanks to the research of, of UNEP, among others, 85% uh, of all marine waste, making them the most prevalent, damaging, and harmful component of marine litter. Uh, the cost efficiency and profit uh, maximization uh, that plastic is supposed to offer to productive processes uh, accounts for some of the success that plastic has historically known and explains why, um, to a certain extent, it has uh, proven challenging to seek other alternatives. But today, uh, thanks to the research, thanks to the data, uh, we are aware of the tremendous economic cost of marine plastic pollution. Uh, by 2040, and just to give you an example, it is anticipated that plastic leakage into the ocean would pose a $100 billion per year financial risk. In contrast uh, to the $580 billion gains from their utilization, the utilization of plastics, the monetary worth of losses to marine natural capital is expected to be as high as $2.5 trillion annually by the year 2020. So that, that shows that plastic pollution presents a clear opportunity cost and a market failure. So uh, with a core group of nations, Costa Rica had the honor of guiding the approval of the resolution recognizing everyone's right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment, first by the Human Rights Council in 2021, then by the General Assembly in 2022. This is a strong instrument that has proven already at the national and regional level useful in addressing environmental issues from a human rights-based perspective. Building on this momentum, the General Assembly recently passed a resolution by consensus asking the International Court of Justice for an advisory opinion on the duties that states have in relation to climate change. We believe that this initiative, driven by meaningful global youth movement, as a matter of fact, is crucial for outlining the responsibilities associated with addressing the triple environmental crisis, which includes the issue of pollution, and for enhancing the issues of environmental and human health through a rights-based perspective. So Costa Rica, as a, as a member of the High Ambition Coalition to End Plastic Pollution, supports a legally binding international instrument on plastic pollution that will give technical, legal, and financial means for the full control of plastic. So one of the keys is to advance uh, collectively, intergovernmentally, and with the push and support of youth towards standards, international standards to end plastic pollution. And we have previous experiences from the past, such as the Montreal Protocol, that could serve as motivation and proof that we can succeed um, if we uh, uh, invest the necessary political will. Uh, so uh, we support the need for this instrument to address, among other things, the gradual phase out of single use plastics, uh, the identification of plastic substances and additives uh, that, that need to be eliminated and controlled, the research and development of substitute materials and the improvement of thorough waste management within a circular economy framework. Costa Rica is also doing its part at the national level. Actually, this month, the government signed an executive regulation of the law to combat plastic pollution, which prohibits the commercialization and free delivery of single-use plastic straws throughout the nation, as well as the commercialization and free delivery of plastic bags uh, to consumers in supermarkets. Uh, the achievement, uh, dear uh, friends, uh, of a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment and tackling climate change calls upon uh, all younger generations to step up and demand change of direct direction. We've learned over the last few days the importance of building institutions responsible for youth affairs uh, while mainstreaming youth perspective and ensuring proper consultation processes with all uh, youth in all their diversity. So Costa Rica appreciates very much this opportunity, wishes a, an excellent exchange between uh, the youth 
and uh, remains committed to working with all of you, with the UN system and with member states to uh, end plastic pollution and uh, contribute to uh, a right, a human right to a healthy environment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Minister. And what you shared, I believe, is quite powerful. Oftentimes when we talk about, for example, the impact that marine um, waste and litter pose on our world or our society, you know, we think about, for example, the environment. We're talking right now about how it impacts us as human beings and our health, but we also have to remember, for example, that this costs additional money. The, this is an economic, um, you know, waste, and in, in, literally, pun intended, in terms of being able to prevent or curb more um, litter from happening, this will allow us to, for example, not have to pay that $100 billion a year, as you shared, um, what, which is what may happen or may occur if we continue going down um, this, this treacherous past, um, or, or path, I should say, of marine litter and waste. So we have to be mindful, for example, of the actions that we're taking, because we can look at this as a way of saving not just our environment, being able to save um, additional money, for example, the economic impact, and that money can go towards programs to continue, um, you know, um, down this path of being able to eliminate some of the plastic pollution that's already in our environment and in our water. So thank you so much for sharing that, Minister, and I'm um, providing another angle or perspective in which we can look at this topic. Now, at this time, we're going to hear from Shorbe Mercado, who is a student at Tecnologico de Monterrey and who is also a certified and trained social and climate activist. And as I shared, uh, we're both on the uh, DGC Civil Society Youth Representative Steering Committee. And so it's a pleasure to get to hear from one of my esteemed colleagues. Ashura Bay, do young people around the world have relevant skills and awareness to address plastic pollution in the oceans, rivers, and freshwater bodies? How can we use STEM education and innovation to address the issues that are holding us back from full achievement of the SDG 6? Hi, and well, first of all, I'm very glad to be here. I'm very honored to be in this panel with such great people, panelists. Um, and most of all, it's such a great thing to see the participation of the Global South in this uh, panel as well. So first of all, and just to address the first part of these two question, um, question uh, um, we need to put over the table the fact that youth all over the world come from different backgrounds face different challenges daily in all different levels. And understanding that context is part, um, is really a key to therefore understanding with what skills, uh, tool set and resources they come with to properly and effectively address the plastic pollution of water bodies. So I can say that is, um, this is tightly related with climate justice and how economic, social and geographical position is a key lens on which youth act and how mainly we are exposed to these, um, this problem, right? So for example, if I'm a privileged, in, I, if I'm privileged enough to live in a safe home, in a place where there is not a potential natural disaster danger, uh, well, I won't care that much and it's not affecting me directly. So it's just this honest view on how, um, this situation and this privilege, this vulnerability um, lens, it's important. So if I'm uh, in a vulnerable situation, if I live in a house that's not physically stable, and if I live near a coastline, I may face the threat of a hurricane or a flood that will destroy my home. So for that, I'm more concerned about doing something about preventing, about solving. So. Uh, and also facing more directly the effects of plastics in the shores, of microplastics in my food, etc. So it's all about this and how we must undertake different strategies. Um, despite of all these, youth-led organizations have proved as well to effectively rise, uh, raise awareness of the dangers of plastics to our environment, you know, by offering local community engagement workshops, organizing beach cleanups, promoting plastic-free products, lobbying with local and national governments, and speaking at all these public events and 
in schools, right? But we definitely need to rise three main, two main strategies so that one, we can keep on providing assertive and quality education and information so that new generations and young people are aware, not only about their situation, but of the situation globally, and most importantly, um, of those that are the most affected. And to provide and accompany together youth uh, so that we and they have the skills and resources so that they can effectively act prioritizing these vulnerable communities. So every action and strategy focused towards waste and plastic management is important everywhere in the world because they end up in the same parts most of the time. No matter where you are, they end up in the same parts, either in landfills, the environment, you know, oceans mainly, this is commonly known or born. So youth is key in raising awareness to new alternatives regarding single-use plastics, their habits in relation to good culture as, as consumers and our purchasing decisions and uh, the capitalism system overall. So as yes, youth is motivated today, we may still feel impotent or we want to act in a large scale and will not know how to, or still our governments will not give us the opportunity or the platform to do so. So we'll need, we still need to add more and will the upcoming generations to these conscious actions, projects, initiatives, year by year, more and more, bigger and bigger, um, all of this outreach. So, and for the other part, which I think it's important to address uh, regarding the STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and maths, well, uh, these problems, call out for a tremendous amount of research to be conducted to identify uh, robust new methods of purifying water at lower costs and that uh, would require less energy. While at the same time, minimizing the use of all these chemicals and the impact on the environment. So the popularity of STEM learning has the potential to aid water conservation efforts to engaging young people to make difference in our current and future water usage. So STEM, science research, new technologies will be specifically instrumental in helping governments achieve the SDG6. So some of the science and next generation systems being pursued include objectives to disinfect water, removing current and emerging pathogens without um, this in intensive use of chemicals or production of toxic byproducts to sense, to transform and remove low concentrations contaminants in high backgrounds of potable constituents at lower costs, and to reuse wastewater and desalinate water from sea and inline saline aquifers, all of which hold great promise to effectively increase water supplies. So it's all about disinfection. These all disinfection strategies, I will not get into the technical terms, but there are technical terms, there are uh, existing uh, complexity, complexities sorry, in these all scientific um, processes and technological processes. So there have been many um, efforts by international agencies and non-governmental organizations uh, with many focuses, but still um, we need further significant advances in understanding how for example, in the disinfection sector, how viruses work and how these new technologies are proven to effectively comply with sanitizing water with these viruses. So it's a whole process. It's also about the contamination. It's the overachieving goal for the future of con the contamination uh, to detect and remove toxic substances. And well, um, bioremediation is key here. I am, uh, oh, well, um, I am specializing in bioremediation um, as a new technology enhancing natural biological actions to remove all of these contaminants for water, to reuse and reclaim, um, to capture water directly from non-traditional uh, sources such as industrial or municipal wastewaters and restore it to potable quality. Also, there is something about desalination desalination sorry which is really really important as these sources account for 97 percent of water on the earth so capturing even the tiniest fraction could have a great impact on water scarcity and 
just to name some, also agriculture, irrigation technologies, and many, many others. So advancing the science of water purification, the contamination, uh, desalinization, uh, it's in the development of these new technologies uh, that are appropriate for different regions of the world is really important and key. And I could get further into technological and deeper terms, but yes, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you so much, Sharabe. And I really appreciate you providing uh, more of uh, a perspective or angle that deals with technology and how we can use technology as a part of the solution. And I believe we'll be able to get into that a little bit more. I was seeing, for example, some comments in the chat, some questions, uh, and also some feedback as people were going through and, and listening to some of these responses, including your question, Sharabe. And so, I look forward to us being able to delve into this a little bit more in just a short while. Now, at this time, we're going to hear from Euphemia Wandu, who is the fellow at the Wikimedia Foundation. Euphemia, how do we enhance cooperation and coordination within the UN system and beyond to strengthen youth contributions and progress towards SDG 6, clean water and sanitation? Thank you so much, uh, Cairo, and really excited to be here uh, in this room where all of this knowledge is flowing today and giving young people the power to share in this knowledge. Um, visiting what uh, Shobi has mentioned, uh, we could all agree that building youth capacity to act on this topic is very important. But what is even more crucial is the um, need to enhance their ability to align their efforts towards the common goal of advancing SDG 6. We do recognize that there are efforts such as this youth forum and even more to listen to the voices of young people. But it's also um, very important for us to create an environment that enables young people to listen to themselves on the work they are doing on SDG 6, um, in advocacy, in policy, research, communication, and capacity building at different levels um, around the globe. The UN system should provide a space that allows young people to gather on their own to identify and discuss some of these alignments in the work they are doing on SDG 6. And not just about even identifying them, but also being fully aware of where these alignments exist and how that can help them plug into some of the ways they can design and implement uh, better solutions for now and, and the future. And when we look at uh, why or how this is important, we could relate to uh, the, 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 the fact that it's very important for us to really uh, think from a very collective lens that allows us to identify where the work of some specific youth actors could offer solutions to the challenges of some other youth actors um, on the work they are doing on this topic. A good reflection of this um, is how, for example, people who are in grassroots um, campaigning can leverage the work of young people who are doing a lot of work in communication to reach a broader um, audience in their communities and vice versa. But even beyond uh, building capacity, it's also very important for us to have avenues to tell stories about the actions and experiences on the topic in a way that is captured permanently that allows us to monitor the dynamics over time and, and place. Uh, revit, revisiting, for example, some of my childhood experience in southeastern Nigeria, I recall uh, witnessing um, the Moe folks committing to a culture of reading um, drainage systems of plastics on some designated days and how that really imbibed a positive behavior towards the environment. And also looking at all of the changes that have happened 
over time, some of which are probably missing in the current stories around plastic pollution, around SDG 6. And this will really um, bring our mind to the very importance of asking questions around how can we support young people to assess platforms where they can share stories, this kind of stories that differs across geographies, across backgrounds, and across the work we are doing on, on, on the topic. Um, for example, the um, Wikimedia Foundation runs an annual campaign called the Wiki for Human Rights, which is an, a campaign, a content campaign that allows people from diverse backgrounds with differences in the kind of experiences and actions they are bringing to the table on SDG 6 to, um, to come together to share their stories around how some of these experiences and actions are affecting them on some platforms such as Wikimedia projects that allows permanency uh, in capturing and documenting some of these uh, um, topic, topics in um, an open access format. And elaborating that, this is very important that if we must work around this topic as young people, from our different perspective is equally very important that we tap into and coordinate um, avenues that gives us the agency to tell the stories of the work and experiences we bring from different backgrounds. And thank you. And I'll hand it back to you, Cairo. Thank you so much, Euphemia. And I absolutely love what you said in terms of storytelling being truly a powerful tool for advocacy. And you definitely shared that as a strategy that I think we can all be able to utilize either by sharing the message of, or the messages of others who have um, been directly and disproportionately affected by marine waste and litter, or by telling our stories ourselves. Because you know, it's one thing to, for example, hear statistics like 80% of total marine litter constitutes plastics, right? And so that's important. And maybe that will resonate with some people, but um, it's another for you to hear, for example, directly, um, the, you know, hear directly from fishermen and some of those who are uh, dealing directly with the water and they're seeing, for example, um, how this is impacting maybe their, the catches that they're having in terms of the fish that they're able to, to catch or how it may be impacting their diet or you, you know what I'm saying it's it's really important to utilize um, storytelling and to make sure that these stories are being um, shared and that they're being heard. Now last but certainly not least David Boyd David is a special rapporteur on human rights and the environment and will be sharing his response as a video message. David Boyd, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment. I'm here today to talk about how the right to a healthy environment can be used as a powerful tool to combat the global crisis of plastic pollution. I remember a few years ago reading a scientific article done by some research in Mexico who had found who had taken samples of soil, earthworms, and chicken and found high levels of microplastics in the soil, in the earthworms, and in the chicken. And we all know who eats the chicken. Today, plastic pollution is ubiquitous. It's in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. But the right to a healthy environment, as I said, can be a catalyst to force governments to address plastic pollution. The right to a healthy environment was recently recognized by the UN Human Rights Council in 2021, by the UN General Assembly in 2022. But it's not a new human right. It actually exists in law in 160 countries around the world in their constitutions, legislation, or through regional treaties that they have ratified. The right to a healthy environment includes clean air to breathe, safe and sufficient water to drink, healthy and sustainably produced food to eat, non-toxic environments where we can live, work, learn, and play, healthy ecosystems and biodiversity, and a safe, livable climate. The right to a healthy environment also comes with a toolkit of essential access rights to information, public participation, and access to justice. 
And what's really disturbing from a human rights perspective is that every step of the plastic cycle imposes disproportionate burden on vulnerable and marginalized communities. From the production of oil and gas, which are the basic feedstocks for making plastic, to the massive factories where chemical processes are used to manufacture plastics. These facilities are almost always located by indigenous communities, black communities, other people of color and poor communities. And so we know the solutions to the plastic pollution crisis. We need to, first of all, refuse. We need to refuse to allow the use of single use plastics. We need to reduce, we need to lower the volume of plastic being produced. And in some cases we can do that by substituting recycled plastics for virgin plastics. We need to uh, completely phase out the use of single use plastics. We need to, uh, as I said, we need to also ban the toxic additives. These are chemicals added during the manufacturing process such as what are known as the forever chemicals, a group of more, more than 10,000 chemicals that are very toxic and do not break down in nature. We also need laws to require zero discharge of plastic pollution into water from plastic manufacturing facilities. Now, this might sound impossible and some companies will say it is. We know this is possible because of a grassroots environmental hero from the US named Diane Wilson. Diane is a former shrimp farmer who spent 15 years going after the biggest plastic plant in the United States, run in Texas by a company called Formosa. And they were making 1 trillion plastic pellets a day at that facility, much of which was being dumped into streams, wetlands, and the ocean. Diane Wilson gathered evidence over a period of years and turned it over to the government. Unfortunately, the government just ignored it. So she got her own lawyers and in 2017 filed a lawsuit against Formosa under the U.S. Clean Water Act. Two years later, a judge found that Formosa was a serial polluter, fined the company $50 million and ordered them to achieve zero discharge of plastic into water. Now, in the following years, guess what's happened? Formosa has invested $450 million in cleaning up that factory and has achieved zero discharge. And finally, we need a policy called extended producer responsibility, which is based on the polluter pays principle, which makes plastic producers responsible for establishing, operating, and paying for plastic recycling systems. The right to a healthy environment can be a catalyst for all of these needed changes because human rights create obligations for government, not options. I look forward to working with you to help end the plastic pollution crisis. Thank you. Well, what David Boyd just shared was absolutely powerful. And there's a lot of information um, that, for example, many of us may not have heard before or may have not heard in this context. And so um, to you, Mr. Boyd, thank you so much for sharing that. And we also want to thank all of our panelists for sharing their insights on the impact of plastic pollution in water and the actions that can be taken to reduce it, such as the example of Formosa um, by Mr. Boyd and, and technology speaking up, um, recognizing the economic impact that waste litter has on us and our environment and more. From discussing the alarming statistics on the amount of plastic waste that ends up in our oceans and waterways to highlighting the importance of individual actions as we just heard in policy changes, we have truly gained knowledge and valuable knowledge that is on this issue. So we'd actually like to now transition to make this a, a truly interactive conversation. And we've been seeing uh, the chat a buzz with different comments as well as questions that um, you may have for our audience, um, or excuse me, our panelists from you, the audience members. And we would like to hear from you at this time. Um, so at this time, I'd actually like to go through, let's see if you have a question. Yes, I see several people have already started to raise their hands and that is exactly what you need to do if you have a question for our esteemed panelists. And I would actually like to start with Queen Mother, Dr. Delois Blakely, if you can please unmute yourself 
and ask your question to our esteemed panelists. And to please everyone, um, before you begin, just know that we do have about 10 minutes um, for question and answer. So we do ask that you um, keep your question um, you know, succinct. And we also have shared with our panelists um, that we want to make sure that we get through as many questions as possible. So we also um, want to make sure everyone is heard. All right, please begin, Queen Mother. Good to see you. Yes, I just want to thank you. You cut me off. I just want to thank you. They don't see me. I want to just thank all of you uh, young people for your leadership and choking of the sea. The sea is very precious to all of us. When you hear Costa Rica, the minister is speaking about it, and I'm sure their waters are quite clean. And I can't wait to be with them in Costa Rica. The question that I would raise with all of our speakers, it is our divine duty to have a holistic scene. How will we do that of engaging the youth, the young people that are qualified to do so through their education? I thank you, Ms. Cairo. Thank you so much, Queen Mother. And I'd like to open that up to our panelists. I know that we had several youth advocates speaking from their knowledge and expertise. If you'd like to delve in a little bit further, for uh, Queen Mother and for all of us, um, please unmute yourself and uh, let's hear your response. So Shura Bay, I believe I heard you talk about youth advocacy and what we can do as youth. Would you like to go ahead and take that question? Yes, of course. So I was trying to put everything together in my mind and I hoping, hoping that I understood well the question. So yes, um, obviously, uh, youth prepared with the with the specific and the key skill set and the key knowledge and the experience and everything to effectively address these problematics. As I mentioned before, it's really important. And education, which was mentioned as well, is also key. So I think, um, well, one of the main um, how can I say this? Like the main stereotype that we have as youth is that we need to learn from um, older people, and obviously older people's um, shared experience is valuable here. But we also share from between each other, uh, between each other, right? So I think um, education between, well, from the from young people to young people, it's key as well, um, not only to inform to share, uh, but also working together. So because if I have more experience handling, for example, this part of, of obviously talking from my perspective as a um, forming um, a student in um, um, biotechnology engineering. If I am uh, learning and more about this topic about bioremediation and you want to learn more about what I am more focused about genetics, let's say about that. We can work together so that our shared experiences, um, our shared experiences can uh, build up together more and bigger and we can come up with something better um, in in with a better perspective in, with a brother and better perspective so that we can address it correctly and this is which it's not only important to have um, several people from different disciplines together working working together but also from different parts of the world with different contexts and backgrounds I think that is something really key um, as well and obviously it's also important that if you're working you have already the, the experiences the knowledge and the information inside you and obviously for everyone around it's also uh, about providing the the platforms so that you can um be spotlighted in in a matter of fact or your um thoughts, your innovations, your ideas can be communicated and can be achieved and developed in the, in the best way possible. So I think that's important as well. Thank you so much for that answer, Shorbe, and for that question, uh, Queen Mother, Dr. Blakely. I also see Samsung SM. So if you are Samsung SM, if you could please unmute yourself and ask your question directly. Thank you. We give give you a moment. You may not even realize that you are Samsung SM. So while we're waiting, we're actually going to go to Samuel 
who also has uh, their hand up. Samuel, can you please go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question directly to our esteemed panelists? Hello. Hello, hey. we can hear you. Um, I'm very happy to have joined this discussion. Um, my name is Samuel Boitisiwe. I'm the owner of Waste Segregation Systems, the Waste Recovery Company that is based in Ghana. Um, what I want to say is that um, personally, I can see a lot of youth involved in preventing marine pollution, I mean, pollution of uh, water bodies with plastics. Um, in Ghana, currently, we have at least 100 entities in the waste recovery sector. And I believe that an important uh, part of the whole um, of the whole job of ensuring that there are no plastics in our water bodies is preventing them from getting there in the first place. So that means recovering them at the various points of generation and what uh, we try to do. Uh, there's been a lot of work by international bodies, there's some work by government, uh, but there's still some work that needs to be done to get to that final tipping point. So we have, I don't know, uh, about many other countries, but we have quite a, a well-established um, market um, for recovering plastics, for processing plastics, for dealing with plastics, that is waste plastics uh, specifically. And there's a lot of effort also to move away uh, from depending on plastics uh, to more, to better alternatives. Mm. Um, what I would like to say is that, uh, more help is definitely needed. Um, the main challenges are for young people who are in the sector, young people who are trying to um, work against the pollution is one, the, there's, a, there's not enough um, processing uh, facilities. There are not too many technologies dealing with plastics. And there are not many alternatives um, funding for projects is sometimes uh, hard to come by. So I for the need in that, uh, uh, and some government will work sure that everything that laws are enforced, um, some laws are made uh, to prevent uh, better air pollution, and then. Uh, further problems. So um, I'm just hoping that any help um, that may come from the international body, more help is, is genuinely required and will be genuinely uh, appreciated. Um, yeah. If you may know, I don't know, but Ghana faces a peculiar uh, waste management challenge. You have serious problem when it comes to waste management. So any yeah. effort internationally, and Samuel, what you're sharing is so important. I don't know if you can uh, hear me at this time, but Samuel, I really appreciate you talking Fair about some of, the yeah, waste segre of some of the waste, some of the waste, especially the the uh, waste and, and plastics, and and how we can be able to take concrete steps to be able to really address this problem. As you said, um, it's more it's better to do prevention versus cure. Now, at this time, if you would be so kind um, to please add, um, you know, in the chat, um, some of the information that you were sharing for those who may want to connect with you more. Although we did want to make sure that if there were questions that uh, that our audience members had to ask our panelists directly, that we give them time for that. And we just have one more minute. Um, and I'd like to open the floor at this time to Mohammed um, Ismail uh, Shams to please ask his question. And, and let's uh, continue on with the next section or segment of our panel event. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. And after hearing this much uh, after of you guys, the panelists, I really agree that the problem that we face, the first step for uh, any problem solving is the identification of the problem. I want to ask that the, the, is the Sustainable Development Goal 2022 report says that, for example, only 9% of the plastics are going to a recycling bank. 
So as you can see that I, I would not really go towards, you know, the innovation technological aspect for now. I would like to evaluate, I, I really want to analyze and put your attention towards what we have right now. I think uh, my question will be towards the, for example, the, the, the policy making, for example, the uh, legislative uh, uh, in infrastructure, or for example, the laws that are there, or for example, uh, towards the recycling systems that we have. The issue is that despite that we understand everything, we understand that by 2030, but if this situation prolongs, most of the people, the variety of people will have less access, for example, to pure water, sanitation, and, and hygiene. Then if we understand these devastating problems, uh, and for example, uh, the, the amount of tow that it has over the marine ecosystem, to the, uh, over the marine, for example, species, then what is causing us and what is causing, for example, the international community regarding to the marine systems to not act accurately about these issues? Uh, what is causing us, what is causing this delay? For example, as you can see, the Sustainable Development Goal Report 2022 specifically says that if this situation prolongs, we need a four times increase in the pace of the progress. This shows that it's, it's a significant delay in the process that we are doing. Maybe from uh, maybe we are, we are not doing something right, or maybe there there is a potential error somewhere. I want to address this. That what do you think, the panelists? What do they think about what can be the reasons or the or the obstructions that are causing this delay? Or it that right now it demands us a full time increase, as I said before, to to reach to that goal by 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. No, thank you so much um, for sharing your thoughts and this question. And what I would like to do at this time is open that up to our speakers um, to be able to answer that and, and maybe uh, one minute or less, because I do know, for example, that if you would like to answer this or um, respond to this or reference this, you can um, also do so in your key final message, um, which we will be having in, in just a short while. But I did want to ask, was there... Uh, a panelist who would like to respond to Mohammed's question. I'm happy to go if that's okay. Okay, Euphemia, please go. Absolutely, we want to hear from you. Yeah, I I just wanted to say that first and foremost, uh, we need to recognize that there is an an uneven um contributions to tackling this problem. And even while there is that uneven uh, contribution and efforts on making sure that this is something we achieve by the stated uh, timeline, one thing we also need to open our minds to is the possibility that the way um, a particular community or a particular um, country is tackling this issue is something that could fit into some other um, country um, that need um, um, solution on how they can advance their own targets. And this is also like bringing down again to the storytelling I had earlier mentioned, especially in the global south, where we do understand that a lot of efforts are going on at the grassroots. But sometimes or many a times, there are little uh, efforts to capture some of these things that are going on, what is working for them and what is, what is not working for them and where we need to amplify the work of each other in ensuring that um, um, we achieve this goal. Also like mentioning that because of some of this um, uh, disproportionate um, nature of the way we contribute to this, it's quite very possible that this is not something that may go away anytime soon, but it's also about looking at how can we ensure that the mitigation and adaptation strategy is really strengthened from all uh, corners and all perspective and everyone who is working on this. And I'm sure by the time we start looking at how we can align forces as a singular collective and not about what this person is working on on the topic, but what we are all working on or need to work on on the topic, I'm very sure that it will be very uh, possible for us to achieve this um, in more time that we anticipate, yeah. Fantastic response, Euphemia. 
And, you know, we really do love, for example, the, the answers that you've been sharing alongside with many of our distinguished panelists. I've been seeing the chat just, um, you know, very active with uh, individuals calling in from all around the world, sharing their responses as well to what has been, um, you know, distributed uh, throughout our panel discussion. And at this time, we'd actually like to take one final key message from each of our panelists. So we've been learning so much from you all and we don't want it to stop, um, but for the sake of time, if you could please share with us, starting with Violet Adyambo, champion of Ty Turner's Plastic Challenge Badge. What do you want to leave the audience with in terms of your message? What's one key takeaway that you would like to have us leave um, on the event with? Okay, what I would love to leave for you is uh, be the change you wish to see in the world. As young people, we have the power to make a positive impact on the environment and create a better future for the generation to come. So ask yourself questions. Are you, are you speaking about it, about the environment conservation? Are you segregating waste in your own homes? Are you setting a good examples for younger generation? Uh, your actions are never too big or too small. You can always make an impact if you be positive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Violet. And it's absolutely true. We have to be the change that we want to see in the world. We have to be that change. Um, that being said, uh, Minister Daniel Zavala Porras, Minister Counselor and Human Rights Expert at the Permanent Mission of Costa Rica to the UN, please share your final message with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Cairo. And I have to say I've learned a lot uh, from the, the youth uh, experts uh, uh, here today. And that only shows uh, the, the importance of inclusion in these conversations. So uh, very thankful to all the presentations. What I would like to say is that we said that for us, the keys to advance this agenda to end pollution is political will youth participation, meaningful participation, and human rights. The three are connected. Human rights are obligations of states, but in order for states to uh, ensure those obligations, we also need the participation of the youth. And so um, in, in that regard, uh, uh, the youth is um, by essence, uh, by nature, uh, optimistic, right? We, uh, we and I, I still have a few a few years as a young person. I believe so. We we are uh, we are here to to change that situation with the optimism. So my call is is to remain optimistic, or should I say, active pessimistic, right? Because we need to find solutions to the problems we face today, uh, and 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 the, we need not only the expertise that we saw we have in the youth, but also the commitment the commitment to change and to be assured that your engagement individually, collectively in associations makes a difference with your governments, with uh, global action and, and, and through all the spectrum of, of actions that have been highlighted. So my encouragement to keep you, um, keep you fighting uh, for, for a better future uh, for us all. Thank you. <laughs> I like that optimist or at least an engaged or active pessimist. Uh, so being able to, for example, see some of the issues that are going on or being a realist, recognizing some of um, the issues that are related to this topic, but being um, optimistic or hopeful about the solutions that are also a possibility. Um, at this time, we'd like to hear from you, Shorbe Mercado, who is a student at Tecnologico de Monterrey, as well as a certified and trained social and climate activist, and a part of the DGC Youth Representative Steering Committee. Shorbe, what is your final message that you wanna leave us with? Thank you so much, Carol. Well, Obviously, I'm very glad I'm motivated and inspired. I hope everybody <laughs> um, gets, well, uh, finishes this uh, session inspired, motivated to do something, to research, to make something, to act. That's the most important thing, act. So uh, just final remarks. Plastics are global threat to human rights, including not only the right to a healthy environment, but also the right to live, to a life, to health, to food, to water, another great standard of living basic our lives we clearly need to augment our efforts towards 
the eradication of plastic production and consumption um, so that we can also improve our waste management systems, financiate and support all scientific research, all projects, new technologies, uh, all initiatives so that we can further contribute in achieving clean water and sanitation to everybody. Everyone not should, but must live in good conditions and have access to quality basic needs as water is and a livable environment. Just that, no pollution that would act as a threat to your life or the place you live. So youth, as always, is key here. I just want to say this to everyone out here. Um, we have no more time to lose. Nothing is impossible. We can still write the story that we want, and we will. So we as individuals can make a difference collectively as well. Um, we will do this together. We will transform the world. We will create lasting change, and we will build a better future for all. But we must act and we must unite. I love that. Let's write the story that we want to tell and to be able to share. So well said. Um, and last but certainly not least, we'd like to hear from you, Euphemia Wandu, who is a fellow at the Wikimedia Foundation. Euphemia, you have the floor. What would you like to leave our audience with? I think I would like to live in our hearts that every action or experience is a story that should be told, shared and built on. As we heard from David Boyd that the right to a healthy environment mandates us to have an obligation and not an action and not an option. Storytelling is a shared responsibility that we are all indebted to in beating plastic pollution. Thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Euphemia. And I do wanna take a moment to just read through some of the, the different comments that I'm seeing. Um, so I'm seeing, for example, some of the major sources of environmental pollution in Nigeria is plastic. Um, and it's contributing majorly, um, or majorly, I should say, to incidences of flooding. Um, so we have to recognize, for example, that there has to be youth participation um, being shared um, and activating our youth to really see themselves and see ourselves because I'm still a youth too. I heard what you said, Mr. Zavala, <laughs> am I still considered a youth? Yes, you know, we have to recognize, for example, that these are actionable steps that we need to be taking. We need to be spreading the word. And so I wanna just take a moment for everyone on the line we talked about, for example, the hashtag beat plastic pollution. And I want to encourage you all to take a moment right now. What is one thing that you learned um, during this panel discussion that, for example, you would want to share with someone who wasn't able to come? So let's say, for example, they were unable to attend um, today's session, but you know that the information that was shared was truly invaluable. What is one thing that you would like to share with them? I'm going to give you a moment to just, um, you know, go on Twitter if you have a Twitter account and use the hashtag beat plastic pollution to bring awareness to what we are discussing today. I'll give you one minute. Hello. Hi there. All right. So I'm seeing, for example, um, that there are some people who are starting to share this and even talking about, for example, self-discipline also beats the plastic pollution. That is such a noteworthy uh, tweet. And I hope, Norberto, that you shared that on Twitter using the hashtag beat plastic pollution. All right, and I'm seeing people dialing in from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Kenya, from here in the United States, from all around the world. And so we really need to be raising awareness to this global issue um, wherever we are in the world. So wherever you are hailing from, wherever you are joining in from, your community needs to know that this event, Choking in Plastic, happened and that you were able to gain quite a bit of information from our fantastic panelists. And so I encourage you um, at this time, we're going to be able to move on to the next section of our event. Um, but I do want to just make sure that you are able to share this because this needs to be known. Thank you. We're going to start again and just
And we wanted to share with you that we had created a wonderful poll for you to actually rank out after listening to some of our presenters speak, as well as watching the very informative video um, at the beginning of the event. We really want to hear your perspective and we will uh, be sure to share that poll in just a moment. But I do wanna just open this, this conversation up. This is a, a dialogue. And so even if you are responding in the chat, what is one thing that you were able to gain from today's event, Choking in Plastic? What is one thing that you did not know before zooming in? We really wanna hear from you. And I wanna see the comments um, and the chat um, being flooded with responses um, because you know this is something where we've created a space to hear from you and to share and exchange information and knowledge as well as resources. Um, so I would like to, you know, just take a moment to just sort of take a, a, um, a review or debrief on this event that we've had and um, give you an opportunity to share that in the chat as a comment. Um, Kyra, can I make a, a quick suggestion before we, we close? This is Angela from UNEP. Absolutely. Great. I was wondering if everybody, before we before we end the the event, if everybody could uh, switch on their microphone, um, switch on their cameras, if possible, and we have everybody on the screen, and everybody put a fist up for bead pollution, and we can take a, a great little screenshot that we can use for social media. Um, would I that think be that's possible? Fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes, let's do it. Everyone turn on your camera. We would love to see your face as well as your fist holding up a, a fist um, in celebration or um, symbolic of being able to beat plastic pollution. So we're over here. We're celebrating ahead of time because we know this is possible. We know that we can attain this together as a community, as a group, as a collective. We can come together to hashtag beat plastic pollution. So I'm seeing everyone joining in, um, you know, in terms of turning on their videos. It's so good to see your, all, your faces, everyone. And at this time, we're going to take a, a picture in about three seconds. So I'll count down. All right, everybody. Three, two, one, beat plastic pollution. Let's do it. <laughs> Wonderful. It's good to see you all and um, and see everyone um, being able to support actively. But we're not just asking you um, to, for example, take a part in this in this pledge, but to really integrate it and enact it in your day to day life. And so, you know, excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen, we really want to express heartfelt participation and appreciation um, for you being a part of this event on plastic pollution and water, which is truly choking our planet. The results as we've seen today are catastrophic and you know that we must take action now. And we wanna take a moment to ask you, do you agree? Everyone who's still on camera, put your thumbs up. Do you agree with that message that we have to take action now? All right, I'm seeing so many thumbs up. I'm seeing fists in the air. This is so true. So we need to use the same energy and, and vibrancy um, to, to then go back into our communities. And at this time, I believe that the poll is now, uh, okay, yes. Um, so at this time, we just wanna use this as a poll um, to keep your thumbs up if you agree, thumbs down if you disagree, this is, uh, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up, a lot of smiles. I'm seeing a lot of people in agreement, and it's so good to see that. Thank you so much for sharing your responses and being a part of the hashtag beat plastic pollution social media moment. Um, so we also want to take a moment to uh, let you know that we will be sharing, um, you know, this information and sharing some of these pictures and sharing the smiling faces that we've seen as a part of our, our collected uh, commitment to hashtag beat plastic pollution. Throughout the discussions, we've heard inspiring stories of resilience, innovation, and collaboration from our distinguished panel of speakers. We've learned the critical role um, that active participants and advocates across different sectors and the urgent need to address the issue of water pollution. As we come to the end of this panel discussion, I would like to emphasize the challenge of plastic pollution in water and its impact on human health, the environment, and the realization of human rights. 
it also costs us more money to have to deal with this plastic pollution in the water than it does to actually prevent it or curb it at this time, which is why we have to act now. We've heard from our distinguished panelists about the opportunities and challenges presented through advancing the implementation of the right to a healthy environment and the negotiations of new uh, legally binding instruments or uh, information on plastics in terms of sharing and exchanging resources. We've also learned about the inspiring actions being taken by uh, actors around the world, youth actors, as well as intergovernmental actors to support the achievement of the SDGs, particularly SDG 6, clean water and sanitation. It is clear that we need to work together across sectors and borders to address this global challenge. The United Nations, member states, civil society, the private sector, and individuals all have a role to play. Let us continue to raise awareness, share knowledge, and take concrete steps and actions to hashtag beat plastic pollution and promote the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment for all. My name is Cairo Eubanks, and it's been such a pleasure being able to moderate this panel, Choking in Plastic, a side event of the ECOSOC Youth Forum. Thank you again for your participation and collaborating with us by being a part of this event in this important discussion. Thank you all for being a part of this. I'm seeing all of the fists in the, the chat. Thank you so much, <laughs> the, the fists as well as the trees. Yes, together we can hashtag beat plastic pollution. Thank you again for being a part of this very important conversation. And we look forward to staying connected to continue this work and this mission. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Zavala. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Nice topic. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Blessings. Queen Mother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Queen Mother. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Blessing. Bye bye. Blessing. 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 God bless. Hi, excuse me, um, is